Buongiorno and welcome back to Koi Fish Johnny. Okay, in this episode we're going to be talking about new pond syndrome. Uh, what I've learned, basically I'm restarting my pond up again because I lost all my fish. So, and because of the way I cleaned my pond, I killed all the bacteria and everything off and dried it out and done everything, I am back to square one, literally square one. And this is really significant in pond keeping because as po good pond keepers know, maturity is a great thing to have within your filter system. Within pond keeping really, everything seems to be within pond keeping. The more mature and the more time and the more stable it's been, the better your pond keeping experience. But new pond syndrome is not to be messed around with and I have suffered a little bit with it this time. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do a little video because uh, I've listened to a bit of advice from you guys in the comments on my last video and also I'm going to talk about my experience of kicking this filter system back up what I've seen, um, how I've adapted towards it what I've done to work with it successfully, I might add, so far all six fish are very happy, healthy and bobbing around certainly not being overfed but anyway, so I thought I'd run with you my understanding of new pond syndrome and why it is so significant the way that I think about this is the fish are basically, and this is a bit strange, but it's Kai Fish Johnny, so we do things, try and explain things in a bit of a different way. Um, they're basically living inside their toilet. Their to that where they poo goes around and it comes back around. So you can understand that if we were living in our own poo, we'd want it removing and the fragments that go with it. <laughs> Not the nicest thing to think about. So that's when it comes to ours, your filtration, okay? And there's, at the beginning, I think when you first start your pond keeping, there is so much that you just don't understand. You just think fresh water, fresh fish, happy filtration, take out big clumps, gone. That's not the case. And that's why this new pond syndrome's here. So first of all, I think we've got to really understand what new pond syndrome is. And new pond syndrome, basically, to my understanding, is a lack of beneficial bacteria that's built up within the filtration system to be able to deal with the amount of waste or ammonia uh, that's coming the filters way. So one of the first things that's banded about that you first come across is mechanical and biological filtration. And to me, they sounded a little bit overwhelming when I first came to it, but basically mechanical filtration is just what the center of the Nexus does. It stops the big poo particles, it traps them in the middle, and then you're able to flush them out, okay? So mechanical is just basically physical, like physical filtration of a system. And you just drop it, like if you come over here, or if you've got one, that section, does not allow anything to pass through it that isn't very, very, very small. It traps it, you bubble it round, it throws it all to the outside, and then you flush it like a toilet all completely out. So that's your mechanical filtration, which is very, very easy. And that is the part that you think is done and dusted early on, I personally think, but it's not. This is where the complex side takes place, here. Here in the outer chamber there. So you can see, if I just pop you over the top, there. You can see everything bubbling around, bubbling and bubbling and bubbling, and that's really, really, really relevant. And you can see here, these have like got super large surface area on. For the size of them, they've got like areas that a lot of good bacteria, hopefully, can grow and fight. The biological side is the problem at the beginning, because basically when you kick up the filter system, that's all fresh, it's all clean to us. The plastic's all clean, the surface area's all clean, everything's pristine but it hasn't got any good bacteria to fight with. So it's like an army, if you like, or, 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 or a type of movie type of thing. Do you know what? It sounds a bit stupid, this, but maybe even like a movie. Do you know what I mean? So you've got no goodies at the beginning and loads of baddies coming from your fish, which is the ammonia flying into the system. Um, so then we've not got enough goodies at the start of the movie, because it's always at the start of the movie. In this system, to fight off the baddies at the beginning. And that's why it's important not to overfeed, not to overstock your pond, not to do too many changes, and why you really have to be on top of your parameters at the beginning. Basically, the outer chamber, the biological side, is doing something called the nitrogen cycle, which is taking the ammonia, which is the large mass of the fish feces, out of the system, or the fragments that have got through the mechanical side, into that side, the ammonia, and then it's hitting it with uh, oxygen movement large surface area so it can all so all the beneficial beneficial bacteria can grow on the media the little k1 media that i showed you a minute ago uh, it can start to grow on there but that's the problem when you first kick up your system you put that stuff in uh, i can't remember the name i'll drop a picture of it here that i've already put in you put that in and that helps boost your system to start building up it, but the system hasn't grown any good bacteria in here uh, it hasn't grown the ability to fight back 
yeah it's very very weak and very fragile so you've not got a large amount that can deal with a large amount of feces a large amount of ammonia uh, and a large amount of uh, nitrite which can obviously be very very dangerous to the fish so that's why they say at the beginning with new pond syndrome you're basically building your army your army of bacteria here uh, your good bacteria on the surface area of your pond that is able to take down the ammonia and convert that ammonia with the use of nitrosomus for converting the ammonia was oxidizing the ammonia and converting that into the uh, nitrite so then i know that what you're thinking there because then you think nitrite is also dangerous for the fish but this is just the nitrogen cycle of which you've got to go through to convert it to nitrate which to me didn't make sense at the beginning because i thought nitrate is also dangerous to the fish but anyway you've converted it from ammonia super dangerous to fish to nitrite which is still dangerous to fish so then you have to take on the next stage so then the other part that's going to convert is nitrobacter or i think there's another word for it i can't quite remember but basically that's going to take your nitrite and convert that to nitrate which is a lot less harmful for the fish in low doses but that is why you do get like i've got at the minute you can't see from here but i've got a very strong green tinge to my pond because i've got high levels of nitrate which is natural at the start of the pond uh, of the pond conversion because all these good bacteria that i've just mentioned then need to build up in this outside chamber but they can only build but with time energy and and ammonia to feed off at the beginning but it can't build itself instantly it does take time to just build on the large surface area i know this sounds overwhelming uh, or it sounds like very basic to some people and it sounds overwhelming to others but i know that when i first started this and obviously going through it over over time i've had to learn i'm not a scientist i'm not that type of person that goes into that stuff but i've had to learn why does that take so long why does this because at the beginning i genuinely thought a filter filtered out the poo and it was gone I didn't know there was a conversion involved. But the whole bacterial filtration side, that's what it is. It's just, it's converting it. Sorry, I'm having to record this video with one of my sons uh, with two dinosaurs fighting at the side of the pond. Okay, so if I keep getting distracted, I'm extremely sorry, but I'm putting up with a dinosaur fight as well as a fight against bad bacteria or ammonia, should I say. So basically in a nutshell, it is all going off. Um, but I really do think this can help people because I think at the start you get told a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff goes in and out and you just think nice pretty water easy to keep easy to do i'm lucky uh because i've been guided and supported and there's a lot of information in the comments section that come through from some awesome people and i was gonna i had a list of names that contribute towards my knowledge and the build up and support my um my growth in this in this hobby and i was gonna name them but i thought you know what i'm gonna be there for too long but there is some mega mega people within the comments that really really is that helped me have helped my knowledge build up so i can repress a little bit back that i understand but what you've got to understand about what i understand is it is only the surface area that i understand not the surface area of the media but the surface area of um I'm not an expert, I'm just a beginner. I'm just somebody who's a hobbyist and love it. And I try and repress things in a way that I think that might have helped me a few years ago when I very first started. So I think the fact of the baddies coming in to the, to the, the trap, <laughs> the baddies coming into the trap here, and then some getting flushed away, bits getting through, and then building up the goodies on the outside like a movie over time at the beginning, there's not enough goodies. And then we're gonna take down the baddies because we'll colonize, that's a word that's thrown around a lot, colonize. So. The good bacteria will colonize the large surface area of the K1 media and when it's matured to a certain level and been fed the adequate level of ammonia it will grow and grow and grow and that's one of the things to consider as I go off on a tangent is why you don't just like double your fish or treble your fish size because the filter system while it's established is established to deal with only a certain amount so say I've got six fish in there now uh, which is probably the highest end that you'd really add any fish in to start your pond with but they are only like 20 25 centimeter fish they're not massive big whoppers but if you was to add six massive big whoppers you would have big problems because you've got big ammonia turds coming your way <laughs> i don't think there's any other way of saying that um but that's why you start with a small amount and you don't go trebling up or doubling up really high volumes adding them to your pond because you'll just get the spike because like i've just explained you've not got a big enough gang in the outside chamber to take down what's coming their way they need to feed on it for a while so that's lovely son well done i'm glad you enjoyed that spider web can i get back to this yeah 
<laughs> yes, I'm back. Uh, very patient little boy there. But what are you doing? You're showing your dinosaur? Are they fighting? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I got rudely interrupted there for a dinosaur fight. But I wasn't really that interested in trying to get to the end of this story because I keep waffling and going sideways. So, I hope that somehow I've put this video together in a way that has helped explain um, a little bit or give some type of value, some type of insight into how I'm understanding what goes on in this and biological filtration after the mechanical filtration and why it is so important to be slow and steady with your pond and not just smashing loads of massive car in at once. So another thing to consider as I get rudely interrupted again is the biological filtration side is all a live process. It's like a living process. And if something was to come in and disturb that and take it down, it would crash your pond. And that's what happens. So you'd hope nothing comes into there. And that's why we do our water tests two times a week or once a week at the minute. I'm doing them a lot, quite a bit more than that, to be honest. Okay, guys, I think I'm gonna have to give in. I think I'm just gonna have a da dinosaur fight in the background. It isn't often happening this, and it isn't essential towards your filtration, nor the biological or the mechanical filtration. You do not, I must stress, do not have to have the dinosaurs fighting on your Nexus to develop biological filtration. <laughs> this is actually getting quite compli complicated now. But I hope I've presented that or presented that or repressed that because I'm not inventing anything here uh, in an adequate way. And if there's people out there that want to drop a comment, yeah, Johnny, you got that nail nailed on. If you want to add something in the comments, feel free to. This isn't a conclusive, definitive guide on biological filtration and because i understand that there's a lot more that happens than the nitrogen cycle but i don't know enough about microbacteria and all the rest of the stuff that goes on in there but all that i know is when you've got a mature good bacterial filtration system it is worth its weight in gold so that's why new pond zone it um you do have to fight back the ammonia really bad at the beginning and the nitrite and the nitrate which is what is giving my pond that green tint, which drives me crazy. Obviously, I've got the UV light on, but it's not going to take care of it all because my pond is heavily loaded. Or not heavily loaded, it's got a significant amount of nitrate in there. And that's why I've, um, I'm going to come on to my next point in a minute, which is the changes that I have made since my last video. Fish in my last video were down the bottom a little bit and they were a bit upset because the ammonia, nitrate and nitrite was too high for them. And it was, it was annoying them uh, to the extent they were doing a little bit of flashing. So that's why I did a significant amount of uh, filter drops. I was doing like three a day at peak, including the Tempest at the back. Now I'm down to one a day and I've listened to what you guys said in the comments. So thankfully I've got an awesome community of contributors of knowledge to help people grow into this. So there is probably gonna be a lot in the comments section that you can learn from, but there may be the odd bad one or two. But another thing that was mentioned to me, and I can't remember who mentioned this to me, and it did have a significant effect on the readings was to slow my flow down. So I've got two 10,000 kilowatt uh, pumps going round, one feeding from the skimmer to the Tempest and the other one going from the bottom drain into the Nexus and back into the pond. Uh, I reduced them, it was about 20%, 30% I've reduced them down to down by, to slow, basically the reason I did that is to slow the flow in the pond, to stabilize the fish so the fish can be a little bit, not under as much pressure. And then the main reason why was, so the biological side here in the outer chamber, the water had more time on contact with the large surface area, the K1, to so try and enable and promote that uh, b good biological buildup. And I really do, I made that change on the basis of the comment that was made on my last video that helped me improve my pond and it really did have a cracking effect. It worked for me, so I'm, thanks for that comment and thanks for helping me grow forward into this hobby. So I hope you've enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this little video. I'm actually gonna drop in a little video here of the fish earlier feeding. Uh, when I came out, or not feeding, I just came out to get say hello at the beginning and they came up, so uh, there's there's the fish now happily settled in. I think this is week three, I think full filtration maturity, if you like it, it there's never any maturity in this garden. Um, it should take about 12 months or some, a lot of people have said, but I'm, I was more like, when does it get to a level where it's able to deal with what it needs to, to reduce it down to a safe level? So we are seeing week three here, uh, moving into week four, we are seeing uh, there must be some good, good 
bacteria that's building there but obviously we're still slow and steady but i've got to go now because i've got a dinosaur fight on <laughs> okay so i hope you've enjoyed the video